Hey everyone, it's Natalie. I hope you're having a really great holiday season with whatever it is you're celebrating and that you're enjoying every moment of it. Uh, today is Thanksgiving and I released an episode, but if you're looking at it and thinking, huh, that's way shorter than I'm used to for To All The Men I've Tolerated Before, you're correct. This is a teaser of a Hocus Pocus and Hocus Pocus 2 Still Comfy episode that Jules from Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous and I only posted on Patreon. So if you want all of our opinions on the sequel, the original Hocus Pocus, and how it relates to tolerating everyday misogyny, you will have to join the Patreon. There's a link in the show notes. To our existing patrons, thank you so much for supporting the show. It means the world to me. And the only thing I want out of this holiday season and going into 2023 is that there are more of you. So this community grows. So make sure you've told a friend about To All The Men I've Tolerated Before. Make sure you've looked at the Patreon link if you're not a member yet. And make sure that your smiles are only for joy. I've been trying to buy drip cough, drip decaf, you know, Uh like it grounds and the normal place I buy them from, she's like, oh, we're out. And it's like, okay, that makes sense. Cause I'm literally the only person that buys your bagged decaf. Um, And then she was like, oh, you should try this place. They have good coffee. They probably have decaf. And I just haven't had a chance to make it there. But as at the grocery store the other day, not a single bag of decaf to be found. So I had to buy K-cups. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'm glad I kept my fucking Keurig, but also no. Um, So I drove and got coffee this morning, which made Joe happy because she loves to be in the car. (laughs) I drink coffee so infrequently now that when I want it, I just buy it. Mm -hmm. I love sitting with a hot cup of coffee in the morning and reading my book and then like switching over to like my work day. Yeah. No, I go I through that. four or five cups of coffee in the, yeah. I used to drink more than that. The doctor was like, if you want to make it to 50, you should drink decaf and less coffee. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. I don't want to make it to 50. So I'm glad you asked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then every time I order a decaf drink from like a non Starbucks, they're like, oh, I feel bad making that. And I just like, fuck you. Like, oh, and then I guilt them. Well, my doctor says I can't have fully loaded caffeine because of my heart so shoulder shrug what do you mean i feel bad making that starbucks that's your fucking job Mm -hmm. like sorry that i needed decaf like uh, also you're clearly under 35 because anybody over 35 knows that after a certain point in the day usually around noon you can't have caffeine (laughs) you'll be up all night I hope we're just like starting this episode with no context for the Patreon members where it's just like, we didn't say hello. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay, let's dive in then. So this is a dual episode. So friends of pop culture make me jealous and to all the men I've tolerated before, we'll get a a smash hodgepodge of a monster mash, if you will. Yes! It's a monster match of our two shows. Natalie, why don't you tell everybody who you are? Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm the host of To All the Men I've Tolerated Before, your weekly look at everyday misogyny and one half of Still Comfy, the half of Still Comfy that loves One Tree Hill, and most importantly, Gavin DeGraw. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most important part. That's you have to say that. Yeah. One day he's going to come on our show. Yeah, one day. I keep tagging him in all the things. (laughs) He's got nine seasons to show up. (laughs) Friends, you know me, Julia Washington, your host of Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous, where we analyze pop culture through the lens of race or gender and sometimes both. This uh, bonus Patreon-only episode is just going to be, I don't even know, because Natalie and I are talking about the Hocus Pocus movies. The original was from 1993. They They made a second one. That came out in 2022, you know, and I have to say, I kind of wish they had done it in 2023. So there'd be like a, a tr- like a true 30 yeah. year gap that yeah. would have felt good. 
morons but whatever you know maybe they're worried about bet's health i don't know that's what i was gonna say <laughs> i was like what if they think that bet's gonna die somebody... watch her die in 2023 and we're assholes somebody was like oh she's 80 and she's doing all this stuff i was like first of all she's not 80 she's not 80 second of all she's like 76 so it's not that far off yeah but i won't let my mom tell me how close or if my great aunts are over the age of 80 because i don't like dealing with that in like a spiritual way i totally get it whenever anybody from my dad's generation passes away i'm always like too close to home that's like i don't like that your birth year is like right next to my dad's birth year yeah okay so let's do a quick summary of the original (laughs) and friends who are familiar with pop culture makes me jealous know that i love to pull from google the summaries and because Wikipedia. i just think it's, yeah because it's hilarious three young women accidentally bring back nope that's current <laughs> come on first off what if the patreon members don't know what still comfy is we just oh, like rock sh- and rolled right into this <laughs> why don't you tell everybody what still comfy is while i find the true summary of 1993 so patreon um we ran out of weeks in October to do all of the spooky content that I would have liked to have covered. And therefore, you are the only people getting the still comfy movie breakdown of the Hocus Pocus franchise because I can't go through spooky season without talking about Hocus Pocus. And so Still Comfy is our modernized look at all of our comfort movies to st- to see if they can still hang. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We found out Greece could not. Could not. Could not. Which... In fact, Greece is boring. That's my hot take. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I'm not wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, now for the Hocus Pocus 1993 summary. After moving to Salem, Massachusetts, teenager Max Dennison explores an abandoned house with his sister, Danny, and their new friend, Allison. After dismissing a story Allison tells as superstitious, Max accidentally frees a coven of evil witches who used to live in the house. Now, with the help of a magical cat, the kids must steal the witch's book of spells to stop them from becoming immortal. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. okay so for the summary for the 2022 episode episode movie which is only streaming on disney plus it is a streaming only film i just yeah, need to disney, make sure everyone and understands plus that fucked up my tv after i watched the hocus pocus movies <laughs> it like bunched up all of my apps i had to do a hard reboot i was like fuck you disney plus yeah <laughs> okay so hocus pocus 2 Three young women accidentally bring back the Sanderson sisters to modern day Salem and must figure out how to stop the child hungry witches from wreaking havoc on the world. Hocus Pocus, where Penelope had a meltdown every time Binks meowed, which isn't very often in the movie, but she was on like high alert after the first one. And I was like, he's on the tv <laughs> yeah joe does the same thing when she hears people whistle or like outside noises she'll be like, hur, hur. And you're like ma'am that is the television <laughs> there's no one in the backyard <laughs> i was like he's a puppet cat mm-hmm. on the tv so my first question is did you ever have a crush on the guy or you know what girl i forget what her name is on the show allison allison you know what Are you talking about Max or the ghost cat? Max. Oh, never Max. Did you have a crush on Thackeray? Everyone I know has a crush on Thackeray. Interesting. Is that not how it rolls in your life? I don't know. Everyone I know thinks it's so unfortunate that Thackeray is dead. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, like, I was watching it. I was like, he's too pretty. But then, like, his buddy who was like, alas, Emily is following the smoke. I was like where was this man's career (laughs) we did go ahead doing it the most um and my friend uh at trivia this week or at some point last week she told me uh oh it was this week it was wednesday on trivia she was like 
I thought the cat was hot. I was like, oh, yeah, the ghost, Thackeray. And she goes, no. I thought he was hotter as the cat. <laughs> and I was like, what about Salem from Sabrina and the Teenage Witch? And she goes, oh, yeah, with that brand of sarcasm? Absolutely. <laughs> Salem from the Teenage Witch is hot. <laughs> the only way men are acceptable is in cat form with right, sarcasm. Right, puppet cats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I didn't w grow up watching Hocus Pocus. You didn't? No. Remember, I came from a conservative Christian Oh, that's family. right. The witches. The witches. witches. are bad. I don't know how old I was when I first saw it. I must have seen it at my aunt's house. <clears throat> That's the only thing that makes sense because my, even though my auntie was like, I go to church and we are Christians. Um, that's not how she sounded. <laughs> she sounded yes, it more is. Southern black than that. Um, I, but it still tracks because she would let me, she's the reason why I think that I have like my issues with like scary movies. Cause we mm -hmm. would watch that shit as children at her house. <laughs> well but it wasn't an annual thing and then when my best friend when my best friend had her daughter and her daughter was old enough to start watching hocus pocus then it started becoming an annual thing i truly think that even For in me. the nine yeah i think in the 90s hocus pocus wasn't a yearly thing i think that hocus pocus had some sort of renaissance mm -hmm. when I was in college. And then everyone was dressing like the Sanderson sisters. Yeah. They were fucking, they became like the symbols of Halloween. Yeah. You know what? That tracks because let's see, we're talking like what, 10 ish years ago, 10, 12 mm -hmm. years ago. That makes sense because even the people I know now, oh God, please don't be mad at me, friends, who are like so into Hocus Pocus and do all the things. I don't remember them being that into it 12 years ago. I think it had its resurgence because of streaming. Yeah, I do too. I think um, I think that Hocus Pocus was probably a really easy one to miss if your family wasn't into taking you to the theater. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that the Disney Channel made a point to like show it every Halloween because they had like, mom's got a date with a vampire and twitches and... They had and a new they, one every year. And they successfully always re-ran the Halloween Town trilogy. Yes. And because I remember, like, we didn't have cable until I was a senior in high school. But my, again, same auntie mm -hmm. who ruined me about scary movies yeah, um, did. And I remember Halloween Town always being, like, on this time of I year. I love Halloween Town. It's adorable. It's so cute. And it's and it's very Disney in the sense of like we can safely show this on television and it's mm -hmm. not an issue because yeah. Disney's very particular. Whereas, which is fine. Whereas okay. my best friend took her kids to an outdoor like viewing of Hocus Pocus. And so she pre-watched it at home so they wouldn't bother her during the event. Oh my god. And so they're pre-watching it at home and she's like, well. I just had to uh, tell my children what a virgin was. <laughs> I, was like, Ooh. I was like, I'm surprised my dad let me watch it then. You know what? That's an interesting point, though, because I don't think a children's TV show would be so um, open about virgins and virginity. Right. Nowadays. Well, and like demonizing the virgin, being like, it's the virgin's fault. They light, lit the candle. How dare the virgin light the candle? Virgin rich witchcraft is the best witchcraft. Like, what? <laughs> we must need virgin. Right. Do you so think, weird. because like, are we going to do them in sequential order? No, we, we can just, go out of order. Okay. We can just talk all across because the board. I, I believe in the sequel, we are made to believe that uh bet midler winnie spends her entire life as a virgin do you think that that's why she's the most powerful one because it like comes out that like billy just kissed her and he fucked around with sarah yeah <laughs> like... yeah maybe mm -hmm. maybe okay but then that kind of leads into the theory that if you hand over your virginity you're handing over your power which is what christians always tell us right. about not having sex before marriage which if you think about it, the sequel dives way deeper like i even wrote i was like of course it was the church that ruined <laughs> everything for winnie and sarah and mary which is how it went for my people 
at any turn of the hat during that period of time. Correct. But, like, if you think about it, that probably plays into Christian rhetoric about witches. And mm -hmm. then if you are a Christian witch, because some people are, or if you are a witch who is very indoctrined into Christianity, the mindset that you have around your power would play a part into how your power manifests out. So if you're thinking like, man, virgins got the best witchcraft, and then you like fuck around and find out, maybe you think that your power got lessened. Oh, that's a no. good, yeah, I'm, I'm into this theory. <laughs> everyone that was our teaser of the hocus pocus still comfy episode that is only available to our patreon members so make sure that you have clicked the link checked out all of the tiers and what works best for you and you now have access to this bonus episode there are other perks that come along with patreon like ad free episodes early access to our episodes you get them before anyone else and a monthly get together with yours truly one more special thank you to our existing patrons, and I'll see everyone in 2023. Happy holidays. See you soon.